Math lesson number 44, Axiomatic Structure. Axiom or postulate is a statement regarded as true without proof. So examples of axiom are 1 plus 2 is equal to 2 plus 1. So 1 plus 2 is equal to 2 plus 1 is true without any proof. Next, a line can be extended to both sides. So, this is true without proving. If A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. That is also true without any proof. So, these are examples of axiom. Now, axiomatic structure is a structure consists of undefined terms and axioms concerning undefined terms. Now, what are these undefined terms? So, the three undefined terms of geometry are point, line, and plane. So, these terms cannot be defined. That's why they are called undefined terms. So, you cannot define a point. You cannot define a line, not define a plane. But you can describe. You can only represent them. So, these terms are basic terms in geometry. So let's start with a point. A point is represented by a dot, just like this one. Points are named using capital letters. So this is point A, this is point B, this is point C. Okay? Now points describe exact location in space. So this space is the set of all points. Whether that point came from the tree from a 3D figure, from a 2D figure. So all those points, set of points, is called space. So next undefined term is the line. A line is represented by a set of infinitely many points with double-ended arrow. So lines are named using two points on it or using a single lowercase letter. So just like this one, no? the line above is named line L. So because this is lowercase letter. So this is called line L. Another name for this is line AB. Line AB. Or line BA. You can also have line BA. In symbol, line AB or line BA. Now, a line has two arrows in opposite directions indicating that it can be extended to both sides. So, this arrow can be extended, uh, indicates that this line can be extended to the side. This arrow indicates that this line can be extended to that side. Okay. So, that is a line. And you cannot define a line. You can only represent them, you can only describe them, you can name them. That's why it is called undefined term. Next, we have a plane. So, I have here a plane. And this plane is also called an undefined term. So, a plane is represented by a flat surface. A plane is named using a capital letter just like this one. So, the plane above is named plane B. So plane or a plane cannot be defined. So that's why it is called an undefined term. You can only represent them, you can only describe them, you can name them. But you can't define them. I mean you cannot define them. So the undefined terms, point, line, and plane are used to define or represent some concepts in geometry. So, collinear points. So, let's define collinear points. So, these are the points that lie on the same line. So, for example, you have a line there, a line, and then you have the set of points. Those points are collinear because they belong to the same line. Next, coplanar points. So, these are the points that lie on the same plane. So, collinear line coplanar plane okay lying on the same plane intersection 
is the set of points that is common to both figures. So for example, two lines, if two lines intersect, they intersect at one point, they can also intersect at infinitely many points if they are coinciding. Now, intersection could be a point, a line, or a plane. Okay, intersection could be a point, a line, or a plane. So where can we say that an intersection is a line? An intersection is a line if uh, two planes intersect. So if two planes intersect, then the intersection is a line. Take note of that. Huh? If two planes intersect, then th the intersection is a line. Now where can we say that the plane is the intersection? Where can we say that a plane is the intersection if take note if a 3D figure I mean if two 3D figures intersect then the intersection is a plane okay if if two 3D figures intersect so space figures you know space figures two space figures intersect just just like for example two cubes if two cubes intersect then the intersection is a plane okay the intersection is a plane now let's have a space space is the set of all points just just like what i said earlier no space is the set of all points let's have this definition what's this definition Definition is a statement of the meaning of a word. So just like collinear points, this the definition of collinear points, points that lie on the same plane. So that's the meaning of collinear points. Postulate or axiom. So postulate and axiom are the same. It's a statement that is accepted to be true without any proof. So without any proof, it is true. So you don't need to prove, postulate, because they are already true. But theorem, so in theorem, you need to prove theorem to say that a theorem is true. So theorem is a statement that is true after proving. So you need to prove the theorem first to be considered as true. So in proving theorems, postulates may be needed. So take note that postulates are needed in proving theorem. So you can also use postulates, axioms in proving theorems. Now let's have examples of definition. So first we have betweenness for points. States that if three points, P, M, and Q, P, M, and Q are collinear, just like the figure. And P, M, this P, M here, P, M, plus M, Q, M, Q is equal to P, Q. Then M is between P and Q. Then M is between P and Q. That's true, no? So, that's uh, that's a definition of betweenness, meaning say M is between P and Q. So that is betweenness. Next, we have congruent segments. What's the meaning of this? It states that if two segments have equal lengths, so just like this one, no? AB is 15 centimeters, CD is 15 centimeters also, so they are or they have equal lengths, then AB is congruent to CD. So AB and CD are congruent segments. So that's the meaning of congruent segments. Let's have another example of definition. So let's define midpoint of a segment. So midpoint of a segment states that if a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, just like this one, the congruent segment this point divides the segment 
and AB into two congruent segments, AC and BC. Then the point is called the midpoint of the segment. So this point is called the midpoint. So in this figure, the midpoint is point C. Take note, midpoint is a point. So here again in this figure, the midpoint is point C. So point C divides the segment into two equal or congruent segments. Let's have bisector of a segment. What is this? And what's the difference of the midpoint and a bisector? So it states that if a line, segment, or array, or plane intersects a segment at its midpoint, then it is called a bisector of the segment. So the difference of bisector and midpoint, bisector can be a line, a segment, array, or a plane. That is bisector. Midpoint is only a point. Now, what's the purpose or the function of this bisector? So it divides, same thing with midpoint, it divides the segment into two congruent parts. So this one, this line divides the segment AB into two congruent parts AC and CB. So that is bisector of the segment. Let's have examples of postulates. So again, postulates are true without any proof. So a line is formed by at least two different points. So if you have two points, you can form a line. So you just connect them, then you have the line. Next, a plane is formed by at least three points. Take note, three non-collinear points. Points that do not lie on the same line. Next, a space is formed by at least four non coplanar points, points that do not lie on the same plane. And so those are postulates. Next, if two different planes intersect, then their intersection is aligned. So that is a postulate. You don't need to prove that. That is true. Next one, there's a unique distance between any different points on the number line this is known as the ruler postulate so if you have a number line and you mark a and then b and then c you mark all those letters on the number line then the distance of a b is different from the distance of a c because b and c are two different points so that's the meaning of ruler postulate and that is true you don't need to prove that that is postulate now let's have examples of theorems so in theorems theorems are true if it is true after proving so let's have the first theorem if m is the midpoint of pq then 2mp is equal to pq and 2mq is equal to pq this is known as the midpoint theorem. Now let's try to prove this theorem using a two column proof. So this is the figure. So first statement we have MP is equal to MQ. So MP is equal to MQ. The reason for that is because that's the definition of midpoint because M is the midpoint of P. Next, we have MP plus MQ is equal to PQ. MP plus MQ is equal to PQ. That is true also because M is the midpoint. And the reason for that is the definition of midpoint. Next, MP plus MP is equal to PQ. Why is this MP? Because as you can see in the first statement, we have MP is equal to MQ. Therefore, we can substitute MP here in MQ. So, instead of MQ, we have MP. So, MP plus MP is equal to PQ. The reason is substitution. Now, MP plus MP is 2MP, which, which is equal to PQ. The reason is simplification. And that's the first statement. 2MP is equal to PQ. That we need to prove. 
So we're done with the first statement. Let's have let's proceed to the second statement. So MQ plus MQ. So MP is being substituted by MQ because MP is equal to MQ. So the reason for that is substitution. Now MQ plus MQ is equal to 2MQ, which is equal to PQ. The reason is simplification. And that is the second statement that we need to prove. So let's have the conclusion. Therefore, 2MP is equal to PQ, and 2MQ is equal to PQ. So we prove the statement to be true. That's why it is called a theorem. So we prove first a theorem before saying that a theorem is true. Next example of a theorem. If ray OM in symbol, that's the symbol for ray OM, is a bisector of angle POQ. So this is POQ. This is ray OM. So this one bisects angle POQ. So meaning to say MOP is congruent to MOQ. So these angles are congruent. Now let's prove 2 times the measure of MOP. MOP is equal to the measure of POQ. POQ. And let's prove also that 2 times the measure of MOQ. Twice this, take note that twice that is equal to POQ. Alright, let's prove. And that is known as the angle bisector theorem. So let's prove the angle bisector theorem. First, the measure of MOP is equal to the measure of MOQ. MOP is equal to MOQ. The reason, the reason is because that is the definition of bisector. Because OM is the bisector according to the statement given. Next, angle, I mean the measure of MOP, MOP plus the measure of MOQ is equal to the measure of POQ. And the reason for that is, again, definition of bisector. Next, the measure of MOP plus the measure of MOP. Same thing in number one. The measure of MOQ is being substituted by the measure of MOP because they are equal. And the reason is substitution. Next, we simplify this. That's two times the measure of MOP is equal to the measure of POQ simplification. And that's the first statement that we need to prove. So we're done with the first statement. That one. We proceed to the second, the measure of MOQ plus the measure of MOQ. So this MOP here is being substituted by MOQ because they are equal. And the reason is substitution. Again, simplifying, we have 2 times the measure of MOQ is equal to the measure of POQ. And the reason is simplification. So finally, we prove that 2 times the measure of MOP is equal to the measure of POQ. And 2 times the measure of MOQ is equal to the measure of POQ. So we prove the angle bisector theorem using 2 column proof. So again, this is theorem because we prove first the statement before, before we can say that the statement is true. So that is a theorem. 